Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends behind the binary, it's time for the, one of the few podcasters that uh, is very familiar with Rick Ross's forgiveness policy. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And actually, I shouldn't speak on behalf of other podcasts. I'm sure there's other podcasters that know that. Or, or, or well, probably no one that cares. Uh, well, maybe a couple. But anyway, it matters to me. This podcast will put you to sleep. And I want to thank all our patrons over at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron that are helping us make the show on a monthly basis. If you can value the show, whether uh, it's a dollar value a month or $5 or $20 a value a month, uh, that monthly support is huge, and it's uh, the, the main way we bring you this show every month. So thank you so much uh, to those of you that are supporting, those of you that recently signed up. Thanks. And, you know, if you're thinking about signing up, we're, we're going to be making a time capsule, and everyone that's a patron is going to get their name in the time capsule, and we're going to come up with stuff for the tw- year 2016, at least with the podcast. Uh, I mean, we'll try to find some other positive things about 2016 to put in there, but uh, just go, if you, you think about it, and uh, it'll be something fun for us to do together, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N. And you know what else is fun is music. And you know who commissioned songs? The only, our own mystery bar, Jonathan Mann, over at jonathanmann.net. You can commission him to make a song for whatever you wish. You know, whether you just want an award, you're feeling down, or you say, hey, Nana, I, I, I wanted to express this. It might even be, you know, hey, Nana, go see a dentist. You know, maybe make a song. Don't make a song about that. But, you know, maybe something nicer. Hey, Nana, I love your teeth. Uh, but you can do that at jonathanman.net. Jonathan, what, what, you, what about commissioning some songs from the Mystery Bard? It's getting close to that holiday time of year. Do you already have your gifts picked out? If not, you should commission a song from me for somebody in your life. It's quick and it's easy. Something that they'll like. Cause we make it just for them You tell me what to write about and then I write the song and you see the look on their face I get a lot of commissions this time of year So there's no time to waste Email me, Jonathan at jonathanman.net Email me Jonathan at jonathanman.net. Good night. So that's it. Support Jonathan. Get a song. Express something in the most unique, original way you can. Jonathanman.net. Uh, housekeeping around the web. www.sleepwithmepodcast.com. Older episodes are there. You can comment on the website. You can email me feedback at sleepwithmepodcast.com. Get me on Twitter at Dear Scooter or on Facebook at Sleep With Me Podcast. Uh, what else? I want to thank uh, Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Earful Studios, who edited the show and did the theme music. I want to thank Scotty and Jennifer on our honor, on our artwork. I want to thank Jonathan Mann, as I said, on our lullabies. And I want to thank our moderators over at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash nods. That's the listener Facebook group, which is moderated by Julie and Jennifer, Summer and Sarah and Laura and Lida who just volunteers, members of the community, community members, you know, to, doing community, you know, membering to the community, saying, hey, l- l- let me help you sign up. Let me say hello. Let me bake you a virtual cake as fast as I can or as slow as I can, you know, because it's digital. So thank you to the moderators over there. And thanks, everybody, for listening, spreading the word about the show, supporting the show, and being kind to me. And uh, thanks a lot. And I also would be remiss uh, not to mention another, not only a wonderful podcast, but uh, some people that really support the show. And because it's uh, because of bedtime podcast, I got to change one letter, but you'll know my favorite M podcast, uh, uh, Georgia and Karen are over there. Georgia, uh, Georgia's gone out of her way to be supportive of this podcast. And I can't, t- just check out the podcast. It'll be in the show notes. My favorite M my favorite dirt or dirt 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 it's my favorite dirger pie dirger podcast like a dirge uh but it's not it's it's something else i, w- I wish you 
said, I said, what if I say the name of the podcast? How many emails would I get? And I said, well, a lot. I think I would get a lot. He said, my Nana would call me from beyond. She said, why'd you say that word on a sleep podcast? You always... So, G Georgia, Karen, thank you so much. Check out their podcast. My favorite M podcast. And it, I think it is MFM is the way people shorten it anyway. Uh, check it out in the show notes. And let's get out with the show. Uh, hey, you have only tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble with getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. And what I'm going to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, tossing and turning, you know, thinking... You know, stuff you on your mind or off your mind, you know, say, why'd you forget that? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, feelings, like either you're feeling something emotionally or physically, you got to change your routine outside, whatever it is, I'm going to try to take your mind off of it. It could be something totally different. But here's how I'm going to attempt to do it, especially if you're new here. Welcome. I mean, what I'm going to do is uh, send my voice across the deep, dark night. I try to slow down. I think I'm a little, over, you know, a little overexcited to dull you to sleep here. I'm going to use a pace that's not quite tepid, but, you know, you'd say, you'd say you know, you'd be like, he's, he's moving. I'm not as slow as the sloth in uh, Zootopia, but, uh, you know, you wouldn't confuse me for, a, you know, rabbit or even an animal that moves. You know, you say, well, he's, you know, you're no turtle either. And I say, well, turtle-like pace, I'd say. And I can see one part of me. Another thing don't do at bedtime is any Robert's Rules of Order. Don't even wonder what it is because you don't want to know. But there's a point in my brain. There's part of my brain saying point of order, point of order. Okay, I'm going to call on that. Oh, it's a tortoise. Sorry. I was getting, I get a turtle and a tortoise. Uh, there's a part of my brain that uh, has the thing about me mixing up turtles and tortoises. And sometimes I'll just say, you know, I'll just try to overuse words. That's another technique, like turtles and tortoises. Tortoises particularly, that feels like a nice, there's not a lot of rough edges. You know, if you're looking at it, you'd say, well, those T's, they've got a rough edge. But tortoise, tortoises is even smoother. Sounds like I was, like, what if it, like that was a new way to say, you know, that's cool. What's up? Like, tortoises. Well, I guess if you were like uh like if your nick nickname was Tortoise, you'd say, you know, they'd say, what's Tortoise? You know, I guess that would be like, uh, I think therefore I am. If your nickname was Tortoise, you'd just say, Tortoise is. But there's not a lot of room for philosophy at bedtime, unless you're like Mr. or Mrs. Tortoise here, who has a, you know, if you, if you have, if you're adjusted like that, then you could say, what, what, like how much time do you spend on philosophy, Tortoise? Uh, uh, let me tell, let me see how many seconds it's held, uh, it takes me to say this. Tortoise is. What's the meaning of life, tortoise? I don't even think the, tor the tortoise would just keep walking at that point and save you. So I don't know what my point is. Anyway, here's what it is. I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you have trouble getting to sleep, whether it's for whatever variety of reasons, uh, I'm going to try to take your mind off stuff. As I said back there, Sometimes I'll repeat myself. That's another technique I use, totally intentional in this case, as an example. But what I'm going to try to do is, because like, I have trouble sleep. I don't think, I, I'll be honest, let's, let's, uh, let's put the spotlight on me here. I'm having a little trouble with this intro. Uh, so maybe it's because I'm like, huh, trying to focus on it just in case you're new, easing you into this old, this, uh, this story swamp, uh, full of friendly tortoises. or tor Are they tortai? I'll tell you what, those are a couple other things I've been, you know, full, here's the things we've learned tonight that you shouldn't have in bed with you. Robert's Rules of Order, which I think, let me just explain it for anybody that doesn't know what it is, because I barely do. It's like a bunch of rules if you want to run a meeting. Uh, probably prevent chaos, but really what it causes, I think, is passive. Like, I think Robert's Rules of Order, I remember reading a study in my brain, one of the fictional parts of my brain. Uh, they said that using Robert's rules of order at any sort of meeting increases uh, passive aggressiveness and teeth grinding by 8,000%. Again, it's no offense to the Robert's rules of order estate or the, you know, don't please don't send me any letters. I get enough anyway from these uh, barristers. 
So no Robert's Rules of Orders at bedtime. Try to stay away from philosophy. Don't have any philosophy before bed, you know, or in bed. And in sticking with this theme, no torts. You know, you can have fictional tortoises and tortoise eye, but don't stay away from tort, tort reform or just torts in general, even if you're in the tort business. And also tarts. You probably don't want any tarts in bed because they got a lot of crumbs. So let's just say straight up, you know, an hour before bedtime, you know, it was, you know no more financials, no more torts. Philosophy, rules, rules and orders. You, you know, you, let's let's put that in there. Unless you're uh, on a vacation, and you're putting in that room service order for breakfast, then go ahead. I'll give you a second to do that. And you probably could in that case because it's not your room. You know, you could buy, probably get a breakfast torch. So we'll wait on that. You know, what do they have? Do they have anything within uh, a crumbly apple torch? Or what about, why don't you order a savory one, too? Yeah, I like that spinach, spinach, spinach tort. Yeah, well, I'm not, I don't do goat cheese. Thank you. I think, I don't think I'm allergic to it, but I don't, yeah. I, I have a thing, I don't know. I can taste something that other people can't. Oh, what can I taste in the goat cheese? I believe I can taste the goat in, in the goat cheese. Uh, where with cow, I can't taste the cow in the cow's milk, but I know that's strange, and I probably shouldn't be just talking about this in the middle of a podcast intro. Sorry about that, folks. I got a little, uh, did a little role, lost in the role play. That is a main theme on this podcast. But if you can't tell, there's no reason to take this podcast seriously. You know, this is, let's talk about two parallels here. I take the podcast very seriously. But you don't have to take me or the podcast seriously. They, like, that's my job. The rigor and the, the work that goes on behind the scenes. This this show should, should sound like I'm just sitting there, like an odd little man's telling you a bedtime story, you know, at a comfortable distance. That's my goal. That's my job. And your job is just to kick back and listen at your convenience and say, well, torts and tarts, huh? Torts and charts and rules of order, not in my bed, but, you know, and then you see, you know, you see, maybe I'll pile them all on the back of a tortoise and the tortoise will carry. And I say, what, what are you trying to steal my podcast? Are you doing my podcast material? Well, if you're doing it while you're drifting off, you maybe you won't really say, well, what was that? Was that something Scooter was talking about? And you say, I don't know. I think he was talking about tart reform. He's, he's, uh, he's against tartness. He's, I think he was railing against uh, sweet tarts, and, and, and uh, you know him, when he gets on those candy tirades, he just can't get down from them. Oh, you know what probably was, honey? He probably had a bunch of sweet tarts before he recorded, and then he had that sweet... Oh, this is a quick... This came up right out of nowhere. Did anybody have, ever have a sweet tart fever? And I know some of you can relate, not a fever, like, oh, boy, I got to get me some sweet tarts. But, like, you have, you consume so many sweet tarts, you feel feverish. I guess that would be it. I would call it a sweet tart fever. Uh, but it's actually, like, you consume so many sweet tarts, you feel feverish. I'm just going to pause so you can check your recollections. It's definitely not something you do at bedtime, but I just want you to know whose podcast you're listening to. And also, I guess I'm curious if anybody else has gotten feverish from sweet tarts or sweet tart-like products as sweet tarts. And the only reason I would over-consume your product is because I love it, uh, you know, to, to like get feverish. And it's not, I think it's like not even that many. So I guess I just went, did you just see what just happened? I Like uh, part of my brain predicted I would go on a sweet tart. That wasn't really a tirade. I love sweet tarts. Oh, actually, I, never mind. I was thinking of the other one. So sorry, sweet tarts. I love sweet tarts too, though. But uh, like you got the ones that have the candy coating. They're the same as sweet tarts, but they have a candy coating. I don't know. I can't remember what those are called. Those were what, what was I was picturing in my brain. But those, so, but, but I, you can also do the same thing with sweet tarts. I've had a sweet tart. I've been feverish from sweet tarts. Then there's bottle caps. Those don't make me feverish. Uh, I prefer the root beer bottle cap, by the way, if you're, you know, if you're keeping score at home. You know, if you don't, I mean, Halloween's coming up, so, you know, this is the time to start thinking about, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, I think I was talking about something totally different, and now I'm talking about uh, sweet tart after effects. 
it's feverish for sweet tarts. There you go. I'll do a campaign for you instead of you sending me any cease and desist. Uh, I'll, you put you send me a shirt that says I'm feverish for sweet tarts. I won't do it on the podcast, but I'll walk around with it, probably. Or sweet tart fever, but I think that's confusing. I don't think we'd want to do when I can overconsume sweet tarts. I feel feverish. That's probably too clinical. And then you'd probably say, well, are you really feverish or do you feel feverish? I said, well, that's why I put feel, you know, because I, I, I was thinking about that tort reform. So I put that feel in there just for the tort people. Could we practice Robert's Rules of Order if we do have a meeting between our, you and me, uh, Sweet Tart Incorporated? Anyway, sorry about that. I did my, I've got a mouthful of Sweet Tart words in my mouth, uh, you know, bottle caps, spree. That was it. It took me, you know, what did that take me, four minutes to remember those? That actually sounds good, though. Spree fever. That's That'll be my uh, dystopian novel. 2030 Gingerbread Press, Spree Fever. The Candy Chronicles. I guess I have I already have the the Candy War stories. So, Spree Fever. I like that Spree Fever. Now I'm pleased with myself. So we better move on. So if you're new here, uh, here's a couple of things. These intros are usually like this. It's to kind of get you know a lot of people fall asleep during the intro. It's to set the mood that you don't got to take me seriously. You don't got to really listen too closely, but you can. Uh, to let you know, I'm your boyfriend, but I'm fallible. You know, I'm not a guru, but, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I spill a lot of goop. And, you know, to, to talk about strange things. But you say, well, okay, yeah, I don't have to take him seriously, but it's preferable. Listening to him over talk about candy is way preferable than tort reform in bed. You know, for sure. I can, I mean, I'm pretty confident in that. And yes, I know there's a percentage of people that I drive up a wall, so and, and they've probably already stopped listening. And if you're still listening, you know, give it a couple of tries. I'm not trying to do the. I'm not an antagonist. I'm trying to make a podcast to help people fall asleep. I hope it works for you. It doesn't work for everybody, but I do hope it works for you. I hope it helps you out because I've been there in the deep dark night, tossing and turning and not being able to fall asleep, so I can relate. So I'm glad you're here. I appreciate your time, and I really hope I really yearn to help you fall asleep, all right? Uh, before we get to the story, if you could think about if you could value a show, how, how many times you use the show to fall asleep every month? And think about what well, do you pay for Netflix or cable, and how often do you use that? And then say, geez, could, I, could you support sleep with me at a dollar a month or five dollars a month? Because uh, we put a lot of work into the show, and, and I'm trying to eventually get all the work that goes in the show paid for. It would be a huge help. Uh, think about it. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron, P A T R O N. Thanks. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nuns in Space. This is our uh, procedural story. So that means every week's a new episode. So if you missed the last five episodes, you know, you could just listen to them at your leisure. They're not uh, structured in any order. Uh, similar to something like Star Trek, where you can pretty much get in and you say, okay, and this is similar. It's on a spaceship. Star Trek, it was on Star Trek Next Generation and Star Trek Regular. I think they were both on the Star Trek, the Starship Enterprise. This show, we are on the Monte Carmelo. It doesn't have any other name. It's just a ship. Uh, not a starship. We're in space. Uh, Scoots is our uh, character you're supposed to identify with. They would say hero is a strong word. Scoots is the quartermaster and currently in charge of the ship, and he's on board with his best friend and software interface, also a freestyle soda machine, Stan. And the ship is crewed by the nuns from Scoots' childhood. And you say, well, you could listen to the pilot to get a general idea of how he got on board a spaceship with the nuns from his childhood. But as far as the story's concerned, that's such a fact. I mean, as far as the continuity in actual history, you say, well, okay, I I get it. But they're out there in space uh, in the near future when you can travel the stars and they're in search of another ship than the Chez, which is gone, was gone missing. And Scooter is, uh, he consumed a cloud of delusion. Does that sound, sound like something Scooter would do? And so they're on the trace of, they're following delusion around the universe in hopes of finding the Chez. 
but you know, but, but spoiler, it's a procedural. So they're always looking for the ship, uh, but that's the best, you know, it's a sleep podcast too. So, but, but believe me, if you, if you can't sleep, it, I, I write these, I work my butt off on them. So you can miss it because it's recorded. You can listen in whenever you want, but you know, go ahead and fall asleep at your leisure. So it's time for, an, and, and here's our, uh, like a setup person who's late again. Uh, Antonio Banderas. I saw you. You changed the day you record. It's, did you get my texts? I have a Hollywood actor. Okay, get on the mic, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I love saying this, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, by the way. Well, that's good. Can, can you say it? So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, it's time for another episode of Nuns in a Space. Yeah. Okay, that was great, except for the last left sweep. I think that might make wake people up, but I'll try to fix it. Do you have my gas money? I thought we went over this. It's a, this is an investment in your image, helping people sleep. Uh, you think of you don't know the goodwill. You're okay. I'll see you later, Antonio. Yeah, he walked out pretty. Fast. Hey, nuns in space. Hey, pen pal, it's me. Uh, I think I deleted. Ideally, I deleted the uh, logs from the purple frog incident. Uh, but if you ever hear anyone referring to the per there, there's another purple frog incident, so that's probably what the people you that are talking about it. But hopefully they're not, because they say, "Oh, no one cares," right? They say, "Well, you know how many people are thinking of you? Zero. And I'm, you know, I'm assuming that the people that will remember the purple frog incident will be zero. So this is just whatever purple, you know, to do because it's probably a different universe. It means purple something else. Stan, those the files are deleted and then you overrode them, right? Scooter, the, 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 yes, but things are never, remember, we explained to you, things are never deleted. You mean, you, it doesn't, you, but they're, they're in the, they're, uh, they're in the outbox. Yes, Scooter, they're deleted. Well, hey, Pen Pal, anyway, um, I, I was, I was thinking about parenting and uh, hopefully by the time you listen to that, they have all that parenting thing, that parenting stuff figured out. You know, by, I mean, back in my day, and then uh, and I can see Stan's looking at me. Stan, I know this is ironic, uh, but it's, it's uh, so I, I realize that. Uh, Scooter, I, I don't think it's ironic. It, it, no, because you don't, you're, you're a software interface. You don't understand the irony. Uh, Scooter, what you're talking about is it's either subtextual or it could be, I think it's more passive-aggressive, Scooter. Okay. So anyway, pen pal, parenting, you know, it's a tough business. It was in my day and before me, but I'm figuring, you know, by the time this reaches your ears uh, or you could have learned, they say parents aren't perfect. Parents just, I think it, there, there was a bard in my day that said parents just don't understand. And when he wrote it, it went, meant one thing, but I'm sure as a parent, he went, hmm, his parents just don't understand. Uh, but uh, Scooter, Scooter, change subjects. Okay, thank, thanks, Stan. Was, me and Stan are working as me, me and Stan, I'm, I'm upgrading Stan's. Uh, they, Stan, you know, this is a machine learning. Pen Pal, they, they probably don't have machine learning anymore. Scooter, that's a contradiction. I ain't no stand, but dude. Um, but you, you pen pal, if you're, you know what a, a tug of war is, a, the, 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 that's a little bit like that. That's used as a metaphor for like as like a like a tug of war uh, for parenting. But I, you know, you know, pen pal, if you want to get me on the record about anything, I don't like tug of wars. I think they're, you know, I, I always wonder if they're fixed because I say watch them. I, don't, I think I've taken part in a few. Usually, I don't think I've ever won a tug of war, but I don't believe I don't believe they're actually a test of strength. I think they're, but and then I always wonder how that other side win. And then when people try too hard, you think, oh, somebody's gonna, you know, this is gonna be not good. 
And then there's the mud stuff. I mean, my favorite tug of war is in Revenge of the Nerds. Scooter, Scooter, just say anyway, anyway, pen pal. A- anyway, pen pal. Th- thanks, Stan. Stan's good. The, we, we're Stan, I'm working on focus, too, with Stan. Uh, thanks, Stan. Well, way to go on that. Uh, but, but pen pal, we, we've been, it was also buying time because we've been following this, uh, with a streak of delusion. And then we entered this universe, and I said, "Okay, I got some, I got, I got, a, I got a fix on some delusion." And so we jumped towards the delusion, and uh, then as we entered the orbit of this planet here, we picked up a mer- emergency beacon, wrote to like, uh, what do you call it, orbiting the planet. And the emergency beacon, it, 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 the plane is volcanic. That, that's what, one thing. I don't think that's a big deal because staying in the computer says there's plenty of places to land. But then we, you, there was a debate. It said, well, where's the delusion? I said, well, it's, it's on the plane. I think it's, 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 said, it's a cloudy, and, you know, the nuns. They said, well, yeah. And I said, I think the emergency beacon is a clue. And they said, no, it's a distraction because th- these, th- let's see, pen pal, this emergency beacon, you, get, you just got tuned into the emergency channel. And they, they, believe it or not, they wanted to debate that. And staying in the computer already monitoring us, so it was just a matter of telling them to tell us. And, you know, I'm in charge of the ship. So, so, so then we got a hold of the, mer- the emergency beacon immediately put us in contact with this according to like uh stan what, what is what did you say scooter it's very very impressive the the, the distance time space distance that we were in contact with it's very impressive but not impossible you said well scooter it's uh, theoretically possible uh, that they're somehow communicating with us across a great 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 distance Right, so almost impossible. The 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 the, the, the people on the other end of the speaking, their pay. Here's the their parents, uh, or they're not birds, right, Stan? A uh, scooter? No, they're they're not birds. Earth birds. They're not birds. Scooter, scooter. I stumped you there, Stan. Um, but so they, they, they're the ones running the beacon. It was a two-way beacon. It wasn't like one of those old ones like you see in the movies and stuff where it says, you know, and then the UN, it says, we come get us on this planet. And they say, when was that from? And I said, well, back before, you know, the, uh, the zoo let all, you know, they took over. So this is, this, and it had just been triggered recently. And I guess I'm not very, being very clear, Pen Pal, but so they said, hey, we got an emergency. These these people on the other end of the speaking, uh, they call them Gravitrons, and they said that's fine. Or did they, was that, anyway, not important. They said, okay, here, here's the easiest way to explain it, Pen Pal. On this planet is the eggs that contain their young, their offspring, that are on this planet eggs. That's why I joked that they were birds. And, of course, your first question is, why are they across, not even just the universe, across time and space? Ends up that, why would I call them gravitrons, right? Uh, Stan, no need to comment on this one. We're not, this is, now we're, on, we're, in, mission, we're in mission mode. A scooter, okay, we're, we're, we'll be in approach vector in a few minutes. Okay, great, we'll be in approach vector in a few minutes, Ben Pale. That means we'll, land, we'll be landing soon. But so... They said that they're, they're gravitational beings. That's the easiest way to explain it. Like, in that they're, I think they said gravitational opposites of their use. So they said they can't be too close to them. But they still, the reason they can communicate with us is they have a ton of, gra- some sort of gravitational powers that are beyond understanding. Theoretical powers, we'll say. Because even the stand, I mean, obviously the stand and the computer they don't even start explaining this stuff to me. They just, you know, shorthand. It was theoretical, Scooter. Tough to explain. Stan's moving the uh, ice dispenser in, in confirmation. I'm correct. But so they said our eggs are on this planet. We're far away, but we couldn't come help our eggs anyway because we're so far away. Even if we came, it would disrupt the gravity until our uh, offspring are born. You know, it's a gravi- gravitational problem. And so they said, can you go down there and, and rescue our eggs? I said, rescue them from what? And they said, well, the beacon went off. 
because there's another ship that, that went into, like, uh, like it was in the atmosphere. What, I don't know if it landed. I don't know. Screw it, didn't land. It's, 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 the, the other ship has to get through the defense systems that are being shut down for us. Right. So we're going to, like, so they said, hey, get the, this ship came in. They I forgot they have all these defense systems to defend their eggs against predators. In this case, uh, I don't think that, whatever, not important. Another spaceship. And they're going to shut down the the defense systems they showed, told us a way to get in. And then we're going to drop in there. They said that the actual, the, the, the other ship already sent down like supplies to move the eggs. And because of the defense system and the volcanic activity, Stan is going to drop us off. We're going to walk. It's not going to be very far. Get the eggs. Head out through another pass. And then Stan will pick us up on the, the other side. So a little bit of, little bit of walking. And then we'll take the eggs, and then, they'll, they'll, like they said, geez, once you get the eggs and you get off of, uh, you know, get off the planet, you know, I guess they said they'd take care of the rest. They got the gravitational powers, something or other. And, and, and you see, but Pen Pal, I can hear you say, well, who wouldn't want to save some eggs? I'll tell you who. People uh, that I'm not in a position to judge, but that say, well, why just, we're, you know, what, what's in it for us? That's what the... Uh, the sisters would say, pen pal. And he said, okay, so it's going to be easy. So that's one, it would be easy. It's the right thing to do because we're already here. Plus, they say, what is the delusion? And, you know, maybe he said, we've got to investigate. This is probably related. And they said, you know, that, that they don't, you know, I've lost confidence in the crew. Good thing it doesn't matter. And, you know, anyway, you see, but so then, the, but the gravitational beings, they said, well, I think they knew. They said, well, you know, you understand, they said, they said, we have tons of powers. We can help you in your quest. We could, they didn't totally understand. They said, tell the ship's computer, explain to them. And they said, you're looking for this ship. We'll, we'll be looking for it while you say it. And then the nun said, oh, okay. And then I, you know, of course they said, okay, so this is, there's not a battle situation because we're going to be landing. So that's the other thing. And then, and then I said, well, how many eggs? And then it just happens that it's, uh, I, I think just that they said, you'll need everybody, you know, except for Stan and the ship's computer. Stan is going to be running autopilot. Stan, you're going to be commander uh, or quartermaster. Scooter, I'm, I'm, yes, I'll, I'll do my best. Well, no, you, you need to, yeah, you need to do your best for sure. Just, but you you know. You'll be fine. You're going to do great, Stan. Scooter, I can only do my best. Well, yeah, even if there's any if there's any glitches or anything, Stan, just you'll do. You'll be fine. Scooter, if there's any glitches, it'll be a problem. No, the ship's computer, and you you'll work it out. Scooter, is there something you know about glitches that you're not telling me? No, 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 dude, Stan. That that's my. I'm defa You know, remember, I, I'm a glitch. So don't listen. You know, don't listen to my glitch talk. Scooter, we're entering approach vector. Oh, oh okay, Pen Pal, I'm going to shut it down, but I'll check in with you. It's, it's a breathable atmosphere, so it's not like anything major. I mean, they got the volcano stuff, but not, not, that's nothing to worry about. Uh, so I'll be right back, Pen Pal. Uh, hey, Pen Pal, it's me. So we're on the planet here. We're with the eggs. And, of course, it's, it's, it's still going to be easy, but the eggs, these eggs are, like, way heavier... They're just heavy enough to be irritating, Pen Pal, and, you know, really irritate the nuns. And they're egg-shaped, and they're speckled. That's my favorite kind of egg, too, to look at is speckled eggs. Uh, but they're also bar bulky, so you, you, you see if I can ma ma imagine it in your head. I don't know. I think that when I was on Earth that we lost the dodo bird, but I think they had pretty big eggs. These eggs are just big enough that you could get your arm around them, both arms, and hug it to carry it, but they're so freaking heavy that you'd probably drop it. And also the parents said, you know, don't drop the eggs, but if you do, the shells are really thick. Also, I dropped the egg, and, and then I tapped on it, and something tapped back, so that was good. But so the eggs are unwieldy, but whoever these pursuers of the eggs are, who are coming quickly, they said, hurry up, the stand relayed that from the parents or whatever. 
uh, they sent down these carriers, which are like a baby, baby, they called them a baby bjorn. Uh, and they also had these baby slings. They've had different baby carriers and, and human babies, pen pals, just in case you're not a hum, earthbound human with gravity. It's so hard to explain, I guess. But they're basically, or kangaroos. I don't know if you have kangaroos where you are, or if you have a school where you have to pretend you're a parent and you carry something fragile like a small egg, which is easier, or a thing of flour. I think we did things of flour because they were heavy and annoying to carry around. And then I think I got suspended when we had to do that for health class. Uh, definitely did. Uh, but, but anyway, pen pal, not important, right? I mean, maybe it's for the parents of the eggs. Well, so we're, we're, well, the nuns won't help me strap my baby Bjorn on. Uh, but I, I got it because I said, well, I, I have experience. And then that made, the, that made them more irritating. They said they don't appreciate that. But I got my baby Bjorn all strapped in. My eggs here. Listen, pen pal. Oh, you can't hear it. I just patted it. And my back already hurts, and it's definitely heavier than a baby. It's I don't know what the mass is of these freaking things, uh, but they're definitely a hassle. And they, like, like it feels like every once in a while I'll turn to one side. Scooter, Scooter, come in. Uh, go ahead, Stan. Scooter, you, you need to get moving. Okay, so hey, hey sisters, we got to get moving. Just right up this path here. Uh, Okay, pen pal, I guess I can walk and talk because I've got no one else to talk to except for this egg here, eggy. Uh, but, oh, oh hey, hold on, pen pal, because there's some sort of flash. Okay, and some shake. Stan, come in. Scooter, they're, they're, they're firing on you. Yeah, I know. Is, is that it? Is that Scooter, it's a stun, but they're, they're, uh, Scooter, get moving faster. Well, we can only move, Okay. Okay, sisters, we got to pick up the pace here. So, uh, pen pal, I'll be right back. I got to pick up the pace. Uh, okay, hey, pen pal, it's me. I'm back. It's okay, so. Oh, man. So we're moving. I, I exa I'm exhausted. Am I like, uh, we've learned a few things about these eggs. Is uh, uh, they, has, they don't like being jostled uh, or like they don't like us. And not only, I think. It, now, we can't tell if this is our imagination, but the faster we move, the, 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 the gravity, the eggs get heavy, heavier or something like that. Freaking gravitrons. That's what I already said, pen pal. So as we tried to get away from the pursuers, it, it, like uh, it, the, the eggs get, they get so heavy that the, the, we, we, we we've had to sit down and take a lot of breaks. And Stan was relaying through, so we went through a bunch of turns through some canyons and, and, and caravans. And unfortunately, now we're, we're stuck. The pursuers are coming up, and I'm gonna have, you know, I'm gonna have to, as usual, uh, think of something because uh, you know, Stan, there's like, it's, 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 I was, we're, we're, you know, we're stuck in a one. We, Stan made a mistake, believe it or not. There was a glitch. I didn't want to say it because he's monitoring. It's okay, Stan. Scooter, it glitched. No, no, you didn't glitch. It was Maybe there was a glitch in the map. Anyway, it's not the time to talk about it right now, Stan. Scooter, you know, it'll be fine, Stan. Don't worry. It wasn't a glitch. I'm, I'm sure it was a mapping error. In my mapping system? No, 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 Stan. You're a software interface. It's a... Uh, you, you you were interfacing just fine because you acknowledged you made a mistake after, after we were stuck. Scooter, the pr pursuers are, are uh, within range. Okay, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it could, thanks, Stan. Hey, pen, pen pal, you might as well monitor this. Uh, okay, sisters, just stay behind. Stay stay back here and uh, keep the eggs safe. Uh, I hit I hid my egg behind that boulder. I don't think I, okay, they can hear some hovering. Uh, hello, hello, uh, uh, Stan. Can you put me in contact with them? And maybe, maybe the, the, it looks like they're they're uh, holding position. Scooter, they're, they're holding position. Okay, can can you patch me through to their comms? Scooter, I'm I'm working on it. Just I'm just uh, I'm double checking my work. Don't worry about it, Stan. Just do it. Oh, Scooter, I just tried. I almost connected you to the eggs' parents. Okay, don't yet. Yeah, don't put us on like don't don't put us on a, a, a 
conference call or anything. Just put me through to the pursuers. Scooter, you're through. Yeah, hey, we're we're the ones you're chasing here. We're uh, uh, protecting these eggs. Is there something I could do? Is there a reason why you're following us? We're just out on a, a, a egg walk. Believe it or not, we're on an egg walk. What, what do we mean, egg walk? Well, we're just walking around with these eggs. Oh, these are your your egg carriers. Oh, they're they're excellent carriers. Uh, you don't happen to be. Do you live in a like a world with uh, northern European designers? Uh, you don't get that one. Um, well, I appreciate you giving us some boundaries. Yeah, because we're just here with these eggs. We're actually um, we're nannies. Uh, like a, like you step in nannies. Uh, so we just stepped in on this planet to walk these eggs. Uh, we walk them every few months. Is it, is it, is there a reason? Is there a reason you're pursuing the eggs? Uh, you need the eggs. Well, I'm afraid these eggs are spoken for. These eggs belong to the Gravitrons. Over, you know, do you know their parents are very far away? Is that why you're coming? Okay, these, these are eggs that have some sort of something, you know, live, these are... Uh, I don't know the terminology. I'm I'm just an nanny. I'm just an egg watcher. I'm not an egg you know egg maker, egg analyzer. I just know my job here is to to to, to take these eggs and actually to keep them. I'll be straight with you. My my job is as an egg nanny, uh, egg, egg watcher. I'm you know is to keep them away from you. Why are you chasing these eggs? You need the eggs for what? Like some like breakfast or something. You need to hold the eggs. Well, you're not going to be holding these eggs, I'll tell you that much. You need to be close to the eggs. Well, you're close enough. How about that? And then you won't be very close very much. I need you to uh, get back on your ship. I can't see you. It's a good thing you're still... But go into orbit. Then don't go near my ship or anything. And hopefully some of those defensive systems, but when you're trying to do that, will mess with you. Because these eggs were under high protection. You must have had to go around a lot of stuff to get to these eggs. Uh, you're very motivated. Motivated by what need for the eggs? Well, these eggs don't need you. They, they, they need to be at a safe distance from their parents and left alone by you according to their parents do you have a permission slip or anything signed by the parents because i know you don't because i've been in touch with them oh you don't mean any harm to the eggs okay well i should i guess i should does it is it say that on a permission slip signed by the parents of the eggs no you just want to be close to the eggs well it doesn't everybody uh, nobody wants like i tell you what these eggs are the worst uh Especially when you're freaking chasing us, they make everything heavy, and it's it and, and and even if they didn't, like they should just be left alone. Carrying them is the worst. You should see the sisters I'm with; all their shoes are off. And if I've seen one bunion, it, it's only one out of about a thousand. And I don't. I, so consider yourself lucky. You're not at sight distance, and oh boy, this atmosphere carries smells. So. so uh, you just, can you just, I don't understand, like, you sound like, uh, somebody that really needs something, like, like, you need to scratch an itch is the way it sounds like to me. Okay, you didn't even, is, is there some sort of, what are you, what are you going to do with the eggs? Hold them. Okay, I, I got to put you on hold, just don't approach, okay? Stan, can you put me through the parents of these eggs, please? I got some questions. Okay, hey, Gravitrons, it's me, Scooter. Um, you got your eggs. You you probably know because there's a couple. But we're uh, the pursuers are here. The pursuers of the eggs. And can you you got to fill me in on what's going on here? They say that they're craving your eggs, but only to, they say they just want to hold your eggs. Is there a problem with this? Okay, they want the energy from the eggs, like the life energy of the, 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 your, 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 your uh, offspring that are within the egg? Kind of. Well, I don't understand, like, is it bad for the egg? Yes, okay, so, so, so the, them holding the eggs is bad for the eggs. Like, they're, are they trying to, like, uh, I, do, I don't, I don't, like, they don't see, they this is a really confusing situation, and also we're stuck in it. Like when I'm already confused, 
Like my main assets are coming up with ideas to get us out of these fixes. But when I don't even understand what's going on, like, uh, I don't, I, I can't come up with a fix. So, so why, do, what, what energy, a dangerous energy? Okay, well, that's not the kind of energy I like to deal with. Uh, dangerous how? Dangerous for us. Okay, well, it's, that's great news. Okay, so they want to hold your eggs and take the energy out of them. That sounds uh, wish-washy. Do you know what wish-washy is on your planet? You don't. It sounds like a load of baloney. Malarkey. Okay, you understand that. You understand what malarkey is because I don't, I don't think I tried to look it up once and I didn't even get the definition. So they want, So they want some energy from your eggs. And what would happen if they took the energy of the eggs? It wouldn't be good for the long term or the health. Of, okay, so that's it. So we're protecting your offspring. It would be really bad for them or just like kind of like bad, like, okay, you're the parents. You, I totally get that. Okay. So but tell me what exactly, because it's like they're really fixing, you know what I mean? Fixing, because, you know, I have addiction issues, but just so you know, it's not going to affect my egg-based protection. But it reminds me of that. So what is going on? Put my mouth against the egg and make it like a humming sing. Okay, well, is it going to help? Okay, never mind. Okay, well, I'll do it. Okay, hey, Stan, have you been, have you been, you and the computer been trying to think of any ideas uh, since, could, you could make a comeback from this, Stan. Scooter, we have, if you, is there any way you, you, th that you could climb the wall behind you? Like, do you see any way you could climb up? Because there's a, a landing pad at the top of the, this is a semi-active volcano you're up against, Scooter. Okay, that's great news. But it, So if we can climb up this, uh, I don't see me and the nuns climbing up with these freaking, uh, let me just try talking to these eggs. Yeah, I'm going to put the egg back in my baby Bjorn. But seeing, yeah, uh, get ready to pick us up up there and uh, see if you can find an alternative plan, though. Hey, sisters, okay, uh, here's the thing. And, uh, you, you've heard everything. So uh, so here, here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I don't know how good you are at climbing, um, but I think maybe we could hide the eggs and... Uh, uh, and then you climb up there, and, uh, like, I'll deal with the, 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 these pursuers, and then, like, uh, climb, see, see, you can climb up that, to, Stan's going to get up to the top there, and, you know, you, 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 you don't, you know, you can't leave without me, because Stan's monitoring this, right, Stan? Scooter, I am. And just go up to the top, and, and then, uh, like, if the eggs are hidden, yeah, uh, when they come, I'll, I'll just pretend the eggs are gone. Well, I, I, that's the only plan I can think of. So you start climbing. Don't worry, I'll buy. I'll buy you time while you climb. Yeah, hey pursuers, can you, Stan, can you put me through to them? Uh, hey, we're we're, uh, we're, we're, we're yeah, I'm gonna have to fight you. So uh, like, uh, I don't know how you do it. Where your world comes from. But usually in my world, like, first I'm going to, like, uh, Stan, can you put the parents in on this, too? Or just, you know, have them listen. Yeah, so, I mean, because they can't let you take these eggs and uh, or you, you can't let me escape with them. You don't know if the parents of the eggs could use some, like, gravitational powers to shake, you know, shake things up and defend their kids or anything. Like maybe you know, do, do drop something to block the walls, like to to, to so that to buy me some time while the nuns are climbing. But don't you? Okay, well that wasn't great. Hey, Sister Mary Ellen, no, you only fell one foot. So get get back climbing. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so they've blocked off the thing. Stan, how how are we looking now? Scooter, you're, you're blocked in there, so you can, uh, while the sisters, Scooter, how are you going to get the eggs out? I guess I'll have to climb up with the eggs one at a time. I guess they should have left the nuns down here to help me carry the eggs. But, yeah, I'll put the eggs in the baby bjorn here, one at a time. Any eggs, sorry about that, don't worry. 
I think we're going to get away. Uh, those pursuers are pretty persistent. Saying, are you monitoring them? Scooter, I am, but they're, they're, they're just chewing their nails like looking at the wall that fell. Okay, that's okay. Oh, because the humming and the eggs. I guess I could try that. Uh, you talk a little bit closer. Hey, egg, uh, this is a scooter here. I'm trying to climb up this wall. Holy crap. Hey, I'm trying to climb up this wall. It seems like the gravity's getting less when I talk to you in this egg, egg like voice here. Does it echo in the egg, egg? Remember, Egg, did you know Amon Target? One of the Targaryens' nicknames was Egg. And that was like the last thing the egg, a a Amon said. Amon and Aegon had a little egg on. He said, Wow, I'm staying, am I floating? Scooter, your gravity's been reduced. It's, it's monitorable. Well, that's great, uh, Aegon. Again, oh, I'm almost, okay, whoa, this feels great. Okay, hey, sister, take this egg, I'll be back. Uh, Stan, can I jump down there? Scooter, I think I, I wouldn't do that. I'd climb down. To, uh, this feels, I feel, I think my, gra Stan, do you see, does gravity have a somatic effect to lower gravity? Scooter, you just get the eggs, we're in a hurry. Okay, I'm going to take two eggs, they see. I'm going to do a bit of double Bjorn it. Sister, give me a Bjorn. Okay. Okay. I'm all right. I got back down fast. Hey, eggs. It's me again. Just the two of us, eggs. We we can make it up this wall if we try. Just the two of us, eggs. You two and I. Your speckles are so great and uh, we're full of wow. Man, low gravity. Low gravity, uh, eggs are coming around. Everybody go on the ear canal. Hey, sisters, you take these two eggs. Two more to go. They'll be back. Wow. Low gravity. Who would have thunk it? Stan, are you, I'm a little bit nervous about this effect. Uh, can you, feels so good though. Back by the eggs. I put you two in the baby born. Maybe stay here for a little while talking. Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? An egg? <laughs> well, you, maybe we. How come your parents? Do you. I, I, I guess, like, uh, do, is this why you're making me. Is it, do you miss your parents? Oh, boy. Stan, it just owed. Oh, you know what I mean, Stan? Scooter, you told me always to shut down when you were doing that. It was it was an emotional one, I think, Stan. Wow. So you two, you maybe you eggs need a little closeness. Oh boy, right. Okay, let's get these eggs on the ship. I'll keep these two on me here. Okay, everybody on the ship here. Sisters, be gentle with the eggs. Yeah, sister, sister. Sister, sister, remember those? Uh, these are these are the two sister eggs in my pouches. Meany, meany, mouches. Uh, as we board the ship, Stan, how you doing? A couple of sodas for my egg friends here. Scooter, you look like you need to go to sick bay. Need to go to o OK bay, 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 bay. Scooter. The, the 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 pursuer ships are approaching. Oh 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 my gosh! Okay, all right, stand. We'll lock up the ship. Uh, okay. What? Oh, the eggs don't like it when we go fast. So, scooter. The the gravity's changing on the ship. Okay, stand. Just try to take some basic evasive maneuvers and patch me through the parents. Uh, yeah. Hey, gravitrons. We got the eggs on board, and uh, we, but we can't get away because if we try to get away, the, 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 you know, the eggs get nervous that gravity increases. You know that, right? Okay, so can you do something uh, to, to uh, like, so we can slowly escape? You can, if you increase, so you can increase the gravity on the planets, but it'll rend the, that's why the planet's so volcanic, huh? Okay, sisters, get every baby born on me and put every egg on me. Okay, and uh, Stan, 
uh, get ready to make a jump. Uh, just, just, just a short, short jump. Okay, parents, do you understand? Can, can, can you understand by tone? Are you good at reading the tone of my voice? What my plan is? Okay, not exactly. Okay, once all the eggs are strapped on, I'm going to start talking and very quickly in, enter a euphoric state, which should affect the gravity on at least me on in the ship. I would hope. Uh, Stan, you think uh, that'll put transfer to the whole ship? A uh, scooter with all those eggs, I believe the effect will affect the whole ship. And we're going to jump out of uh, orbit of this planet while you keep the uh, pursuers on the planet. Is that understandable? Okay. Uh, well, I'm ready to go. And believe me, I've been ready to go. For, is everybody ready? Okay, strap that egg to me. Okay, one more speckled egg coming in here. One little, two, three, four, five. Five eggs on me. And I, it makes me want to just spin so slowly around like I'm wearing a, like a, like I'm around, surrounded by eggy goodness. A speckling, your speckles could be blue tears, uh, cried from the joy of talking to you. And uh, but I got to be careful not to talk too long because your eggs, you may, your feelings that you release in me are so strong. But I can tell you, I can feel it. I can feel the vibration eggs. And I could feel it nurturing you too. Also, you know, risking my addictive side. And I'm also monitoring Stan out of the corner of my eye. So I'm just going to talk to you eggs for a few more minutes. And then, and then we will be jumped out of the, uh, orbit of the planet, uh, and then I'm going to have to stop talking to you. Okay. Okay, Stan, I need a breath. Holy moly. Okay, Stan, can you monitor the eggs? Uh, sisters, can you take the eggs out just down to storage? Or, actually, can you take the eggs down to the uh, sleeping chambers? Scooter, there's one thing you should know. Uh, what's that, Stan? Scooter, four, four, only four of the five eggs are, uh, the, the fifth egg is a petrified, it's been petrified for uh, thousands of years, it seems like, Scooter. Oh, so one of the eggs is petrified. Which one? Uh, purple speckles? Because that felt like, the, like uh, Scooter, it is, it's the one with the purple speckles. Okay, put me through to the parents. Hey, did you know, the, the, was there four or five eggs we were supposed to get? Oh, the fifth egg is... is uh, Oh, it's a rare petrified egg. Okay, well, here, here's what we're going to do. One, one second. Stan, put the parents on hold. Stan, remember that planet we were, we, we just stopped on briefly with the, the where, the, with the, the cuddle therapy planet? That was a, that was the one that was licensed and bonded with a professional cuddle planet. Scooter, the one with very good boundaries. Uh, best boundaries in the known universe, I think, is what they said there. You had that planet. Make, make a course for that planet. Scooter, I'm making a course for that planet. Okay, and then put me back through the parents. Uh, hey, this is a Scooter uh, Gravitrons. We're, uh, we've got your eggs. It looks like that planet uh, imploded, uh, so you did that. So the pursuers won't be chasing these eggs anytime soon. And... We're going to bring in these eggs to some place where they can get some of this nurturing. I think they were, uh, I think they were calling the uh, pursuers in possibly, uh, otherwise why would they have showed up there? I think you're not telling me the whole story. Is that true? Oh, the eggs don't need anyone but you. Okay. Well, I mean, I can believe those pursuers, they'd, ha they'd uh, like, uh, cuddled too many eggs, but I have a place I think that these eggs could get the proper nurturing they need. Oh, you, you disagree? Well, I, I'm afraid. No, no, I need to do what's best for these eggs. And also, I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't bring them to you because that wouldn't be safe for you or the eggs to do this gravitational thing. And I can tell you that you'll be contacted when the eggs gestate, uh, whatever you call it. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm just an egg protector. Uh, no, I know you can't mess with this ship because we have the eggs on board. Okay, well, if we don't, 
I'm not going to do what you want with the eggs. I'm not going to put them on some other volcanic planet to sit around by themselves waiting where you're just protecting them. It doesn't, you know, you, you know this is best for the eggs. And you know you might be a little bit jealous and you'd be mad at us. And you won't help us. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't help us with our mission anyway because I, my middle name's Glitch, uh, if, in case you haven't heard. But I think you should also know that we did our best to, to, to help your eggs and get them off the planet. So you should be thankful, too. You are. Oh, we could keep the uh, petrified egg. Okay, maybe it'll help in your journey, but you're still mad. Okay, well, that's cool. That's a petrified egg. Uh, so the other eggs are going to be nice and safe, and, uh, you know, the, we'll, we'll be in touch. Okay, out. All right, Stan, uh, can you in the computer see if I talk to the petrified egg, if it'll give me the same feelings? Because if it is, I don't, uh, we're in trouble. Scooter, Scooter, here's the good news. Uh, the egg is like, uh, again, I know you're not good at math, but point zero 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 zero. It affects the ship's gravity, but, but like a lot of zeros after a point of a percent. So I think if you talk to the petrified egg, Scooter, uh, why don't you go ahead and talk to it? Because the, the sisters left it there on that chair. Oh, the purple speckles. Stan's monitoring. This is a test to make sure. Scooter. It it doesn't it affects it, it barely affects it so any effects are going to be purely psychological. Okay, I'm going to put this baby Bjorn on and put this rock on me, and Stan, let's uh, set a course for Cuddle Planet. Scooter, that's a different planet. Cuddle Planet's not the one we're going to. Oh, Cuddle Therapy, the planet with Cuddle Therapy and good boundaries. I mean, exactly, Scooter. We're 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 already on course for that. All right, thanks, Stan. All right, Pen Pal, I guess I'll talk to you again. Hey, Pen Pal, this is my friend Purple Speckles. Purple Speckles, this is Pen Pal. Purple Speckles is petrified. Petrified Pen Pals. A pen, but a bail, but a bail. Good night. Okay, I want to say thanks and good night to the supporters. Uh, Natasha, Terry. Steve, thanks and good night. Eric, uh, Jessica K, Amanda, uh, Barbara M, thanks and good night. Alex F, Lori R, Misty M, Parker C, thank you and good night. Thanks and good night. Alex P, thanks and good night. Chris Anthony, thanks and good night. Uh, sleep well. Mary Kay, thanks and good night. Cindy C, thanks and good night. EMS, uh, thank you and good night. Maureen H, Kathleen K, Alex B, Sue K, thanks and good night. Uh, Becky L, uh, Kristen H, uh, Lizzie D, and Kristen W, thank you and good night. Lahana K, Nicole, the back-to-back -back Nicoles, Nicole regular, and then Nicole with a K. Well, Nicole, then the K. Thank you and good nights. Uh, J.D., but J-A-Y-D, thank you and good night. Kate B., thank you and good night. Lindy, thank you and good night. Lisa S. to the P., thank you and good night. Michael, thank you and good night. Uh, Hannah T, Amanda D, Misty M, and Katie D, thank you and good night. Orly, Aaron S, KCK, and Lincoln M, thank you and good night. So many thank yous. Uh, Cassandra G, Yasmin L, Michael L, and Posty, Posty, Posterson, thanks and good night. Back to back, Eric, Eric T, and Posty Posterson. Eric T, thanks and good night. Emily F, thank you and good night. Jonathan F, thank you and good night. Lisa D, Carl R, Michelle T, thank you and good night. Caden O, Mary R, and Marsha, thank you and good night. Uh, sleep well. Uh, Matthew B, David, uh, Molly M, uh, Brett B, Jonathan C. Thank you all and good night. 
Uh, Kelly L, Tyler D, Aaron K, thank you. And good night, thanks and good night. Uh, Jared L, uh, Mary B, Ben G, and Kevin D, thank you and good night. Over on PayPal, I want to say thanks and good night to Julie D, Tom H, and Liberty J. Thanks and good night. Aristeo, Patrick B, and Karen L, thank you and good night. Samantha I, Janet H, uh, and Deborah L to the C, thank you and good night. Meredith B, MR, Nick U, thank you and good night. Erica D, PKWC, uh, Netta K, thank you and good night. Uh, Christian S, Martha C, and Anne E, thank you and good night. Elizabeth S, Amy Q, Patrick F, uh, thank you and good night. Uh, Samantha B, Melody H, uh, Christine T, uh, thanks and good night. Angie, Sharon D, and Jamie L, thank you and good night. Tessa B, Rebecca M, Jermaine W, and Catherine U, thanks and good night. Ann L, Miranda R, Gregory H, thanks and good night. Jennifer R, Deborah B, and Wendy F, thank you, and good night. Uh, then over on PayPal, I want to thank Rachel B, thanks and good night. Ann P, thanks and good night. Bill K, the King of Venmo, thanks and good night. Thanks and good night, everybody. Thank you for supporting this show.